Welcome to Chapter Nine. In this chapter, we're going to learn what is leader and leadership, classical theories of leadership, and the major contingency theory of leadership. Before we get started with this chapter, I would like to ask you a question: Can you name a few successful leaders in your mind? I will share my examples of leaders with you. The first is President Xi Jinping. Why? Xi is leading more than 1.3 billion people on the march toward Chinese dream, which is to put an end to the worst kind of poverty and rejuvenize our nation that has already made astonishing progress. In creating prosperity, with the people's concern as its first and foremost concern, Xi's experience, commitment, determination, and ability to govern and lead have become a rarity on the global political stage. My second example of great leader is Steve Jobs. At a time when America is seeking ways to sustain sustain its innovative edge, and when society around the world are trying to build a digital age economies, Job stands as the ultimate icon of inventiveness and applied imagination. He knew. That the best way to create value in 21st century was to connect creativity with technology. He built a company where leaps of imagination were combined with remarkable feats of engineering. In his roller coaster life, the creative entrepreneur was passionate for. Perfection and ferociously revolutionized personal computers, animated movies, music, films, tablet computing, and digital publishing. After recalling the great leaders and their activity, then how can we define leaders and leadership? Why do people like to follow the leader? Is it only power or authority? Does ordering people to do things make people great leaders? In the example of President Xi, a great leader serves the people and gains their trust and supports. In the example of Jobs, the leader is a guide, tells you the direction to go, sees the future, and knows how to reach there. In management, we define leader as someone who can influence others and who has managerial authorities. Leadership is a process of influencing a group to achieve goals. The early leadership research focused on leader traits or characteristics that would differentiate leaders from non-leaders. Some of the traits studied include physical height, appearance, social class, emotional stability, fluency of speech, and sociability. Despite the best efforts of researchers, it proved impossible to identify a set of traits that would always differentiate a leader from a non-leader. In this page. I would like to list some of the traits researchers found to be important for leaders. Let's have a quick look of what they are, and you can also use this as a direction to cultivate your personalities in the long run. The first is drive. Leaders exhibit a high effort level. They have a relative high desire for achievement. They are ambitious. They have a lot of energy. They are tirelessly persistent in their activities, and they show initiative. 
then desire to lead. Leaders have a strong desire to influence and lead others. They demonstrate the willingness to take responsibility. Next one is honesty and integrity. Leaders build trusting relationships with followers by being truthful or non-deceitful by showing high consist consistency between word and deed. Next is self-confidence. Followers look to leaders for an absence of self-doubt. Leaders therefore need to show self-confidence in order to convince followers of the rightness of their goals and decisions. Next, intelligence. Leaders need to be intelligent enough to gather, synthesize, and interpret large amounts of information. And they need to be able to create visions, solve problems, and make correct decisions. Next is job-relevant knowledge. Effective leaders have a high degree of knowledge about the company, industry, and technological matters. In-depth knowledge allows leaders to make well-informed decisions and to understand the implications of those decisions. Then is extroversions. Leaders are energetic, lively people. They're sociable, assertive, and rarely silent or withdrawn. Then is proneness to guilt. Guilt proneness is a positively related to leadership effectiveness because it produces a strong sense of responsibility for others. Next one is emotional intelligence. Empathetic leaders can sense others' needs, listen to what followers say, and read the reactions of others. Last but not least, consciousness. People who are disciplined and able to keep commitments have an apparent advantage when it comes to leadership. This is the end of the session. Thank you.